Hello everyone, this is Faith of Faith and Books. How are you doing? I'm sorry, it's kind of dark out here. I'm trying to um, do this on my porch, which I used to do videos here all the time. I thought it would be brighter out here. It's after eight on a Sunday morning, but yeah, so forgive the shadows. Um, anyway, I know it's the first day of Victober, um, but I have to finish up stuff from September. So last night I finished reading uh, Lord Hornblower by C.S. Forrester. This is part of the uh, Hornblower 2023 challenge. This was the book for uh, September. And I think I said in a previous video I'd read four books in September, but actually this was the eighth that I at least finished. There were a couple that I finished up. There's going to be a lot of ambient noise. You might be hearing my chickens. My dog is running around. There's a lot of planes going over. So forgive the sound and the shadows. Um, anyway, so uh, what was I saying? Uh, so this was my eighth book that I completed in September. Um, and this is also, this is the ninth book in the series. So um, I enjoyed this book. It harkens back, it, it, it it refers a lot back to Flying Colors, which was my least favorite. I just didn't like the plot. Um, and um, so this, in a way, it kind of redeems that plot a little bit. But at the same time, Hornblower, you got a cheating heart. Uh, so I didn't like that aspect of it. And I really, I've been talking about this book with my husband, or about the whole series. And somebody said, it might have been Sean Stanfast or, or someone, or maybe it was my husband, I can't remember who, said that Hornblower really doesn't write women well and he doesn't write romance well. He's really, really good at describing what life on a ship is like back in those days. And he's really good at the clever twists and, and showing that Hornblower, how smart Hornblower is and how he always comes to the rescue. Although not always, he's been caught twice and he gets caught in, in this um, in this book. Um, but, um, but he, I mean, honestly, in the very beginning of the book, there's this romantic scene and it, I, I was like, what am I reading? This is like amateur romance writing, like just bad writing. And then just a couple pages later, He's describing life on the ship and what it must feel like and all everything going on. And it's it's fabulous writing. So it's uneven in that way, it really is. And so you really have to just read it for the adventures of Hornblower and how he always comes out in the end. Um, so yeah, it was enjoyable. I just really like the historical setting and just the uh, the twists and the, and the adventures that go on. Um, but I, I, I think because I'm spending the whole year reading this, I'm, I'm sort of mixed about Forrester's writing style, frankly. Anyway, I, I like the book. Um, I enjoyed it and I'm going to read, um, the next one next month. And then the last one, the next one next month is Admiral Hornblower of the West Indies or something like that. And then the last one, which was one that people, some people read in April because they had a different list of how you should read the series. And I think that's Hornblower During the Crisis or something. And I'm gonna read that one in November. So anyway, so that's my review of um, Lord Hornblower. Um, and it's, I should say that the historical setting is at the very end, he's in France uh, when Napoleon is fighting uh, Wellington. Uh, so yeah, it, it was a really interesting historical setting. So, all right, so that's that. Um, today is October 1st, which is the feast of St. Therese of Lisieux. Um, but I get superseded because it's Sunday. So any saint, saint day gets superseded if it falls on a Sunday, but that's okay. I'm gonna remember her anyway. Um, and I just want to show you some books. This, uh, first of all, if you don't know who she is, this is, St. Therese of Lyser. She's also called St. Therese of the Child Jesus, I think. Is that right? Or of the Little Flower, at least. She's known as the Little Flower. This is a book that I actually contributed to. It's called A Little Way of Homeschooling. It was edited by Susie Andres. 
and I actually have a chapter in here. Let me see if I can find my chapter. My one and only contribution to a book. Um, oh, where am I? When I, when I opened this up, it opened right to it, and now I can't find my own chapter. Okay, hold on. Oh, really? Where am I? Honest, I really did contribute to a book. <laughs> now it's making me a liar. Come on, where am I, where am I? More, I'm gonna have to edit this part out. Hey, right, here we go, okay. So here I am. See, a real book. Chapter 13, Faith's Family, My Love-Hate Relationship with Unschooling. <laughs> and I have a quote here, do small things with great love. So I cite Mother Teresa as that, but she really got it from St. Therese. St. Therese said, um, she said, this is paraphrasing, many, most of us won't be able to do great things, but we can all do small things with great love. And that's where um, Mother Teresa got that from. And so that was kind of my motto for unschooling or it came to be, I don't know how well I accomplished it, but that was sort of the, uh, you know, just the motto that I tried to keep in my head. Um, anyway, so I just wanted to say, so so that's, I mean, that's a reason why I kind of like St. Therese. Um, and then I also read a really good book. This is a very raw and contemporary take. It's a, a kind of a memoir of a year. It says, it's called A Year with St. Therese of Lyser, Shirt of Flame. And uh, it's it says the grit of sanctity. It's kind of gritty and honest and very modern and just wonderful writing. I love anything that Heather King has ever written. Uh, she's she's just fantastic. Um, so yeah, so this is a good book I highly recommend if you want to think about St. Therese of Weiser. Another person who I just started following again is Gretchen Rubin. I read her book, The Happiness Project, a long time ago. She's not even Catholic, but she really loves St. Therese of Lyser. She was just so full of wisdom. She died, St. Therese died of tw at 24 of tuberculosis. It was just amazing how deep and profound she was, even though she lived this pretty protected life um, and, you know, and died so young. But she was just incredibly profound. And then, um, so there's, let's see. <laughs> Shirt of Flame. And then this book I have not read, but I just got it. It's by Dorothy Day, the founder of the Catholic Worker Movement. And I didn't realize it, but she wrote a biography of St. Therese. So I'm looking forward to reading this one. I wish I had more time in my schedule. I would, I really feel like reading this right now. But of course, Victober is on us, so I have made all sorts of other commitments. Um, maybe next year. Uh, maybe I'll read in September next year or something. Anyway, so I just thought I would make a mention about St. Therese because she's an important person in my life. So, all right, well, that's uh, it for me. Uh, I hope you're doing well and happy reading.